charging electric cars. All right, this one is gonna be on AC charging or slow charging. I'm gonna explain why that's limited to seven kilowatts. We're gonna go over what's called the onboard charger. I'm gonna look at the plug and the pinout for the plug, and we're gonna check what is in the lamppost if you're charging at a lamppost like that one there. But let's start at the beginning. Every time you're charging an electric car, you have to overcome a fundamental problem. And that fundamental problem is that the grid operates at 240 volts alternating current and the batteries in your electric car are going to be 96 or 192 lithium ion cells in series. And that's DC current, direct current. So we have to decide where do we turn this AC into DC. For slow charging or AC charging, we're optimizing to make the grid part as easy as possible. Essentially, anywhere where you've got a plug like this one here or any sort of grid connection, um, you're gonna be able to charge your electric car. What we're doing is, in the electric car, we're carrying something with us, which is called an onboard charger. And the onboard charger can be plugged into the grid technically almost wherever, and is rectifying the alternating current into DC current, and the car's carrying it with us wherever we go. Why is this typically limited to seven kilowatts? The limitation is the grid. Um, 240 volts times 30 amps, that's about seven kilowatts uh, that you can get on one phase of the grid. The grid has got three phases, I'm not going to explain what three phases, that you can look this up separately. Powerful thing is that you're making the charges so simple they can literally fit into a lamppost because the car carries everything with it, right? Okay, what's in this onboard charger then? Uh, the inboard charger has got a rectification stage, uh, which is a fancy way of saying, okay, it turns the AC into DC. Then there's something called a power factor correction stage, and then there's a DC to DC adjustment to make sure that the DC voltage that you're outputting is matching the DC voltage that your batteries are taking. And then additionally, which is very important, the onboard charger obeys the battery management system. The battery management system is a little device that looks at all these lithium batteries and makes sure they don't get too hot, they don't get too cold, they don't get overcharged, they don't get under discharged. When the battery management system says, well, hang on, no more, no more current, no more current, we're full, this can't happen anymore, the charger or the onboard charger needs to obey that and stop charging. The street charger is gloriously simple. You've got basically one or two relays for grid access. Um, you've got a meter in it, so you can be charged. If it's a public charger where you pay, you can be charged according to what you actually use, which brings us to the payment gateway, which is essentially, you know, a little device with the SIM card and that solves the commercial problem. Like you have to log in and you put your credit card details in or use your dongle or whatever you've got. That's not a charging problem, right? It's a commercial problem. And then the last thing, maybe you're gonna have some self-resetting fuses in case uh, something gets too hot in the charger or in case someone, you know, tampers with it um, or something is being shorted out on the grid side, yeah? Okay, let's look at the connector here. Um, this is what is called a type two connector or J1772, um, which is super common in Europe and in the UK. The American ones are slightly different, but the pins are exactly the same. They're just the arrangement is a different one, right? Okay, and what you see here, if you've done any domestic work on your wiring in your house, some of it will look very familiar, right? You've got protected earth, you've got a neutral line, um, and then L1, L2, L3 are up to three phases of the grid. Usually only L1 is populated, and that's then the limitation to seven kilowatt. Now, and there's only two lines um, for the communication, which is the CP and PP, which is control pilot and proximity pilot. Um, there are no like fancy data packets going back and forth or anything like that. Uh, one of them is just tied to ground through a resistor on the other side, and the other one has got a 12 volt oscillation on it that changes depending on how much the lamppost or the home charger side can supply to the car. And that's very, very simple. I've written some code for the vehicle side of this to interpret these signals and control the charger accordingly. This is really rather simple. There's an open source project for this called OpenEVSE, uh, which is doing the hardware and the software for the home charger or the lamppost side, you know, what's in the street, the, the bit that doesn't move that's connected to the grid. And all of that is open source. It's quite easy, you can check it out, right? The onboard charging side is a little bit more complicated because it carries the rectification stage uh, with it. That's all there is to it, really. AC charging optimizes to keep the grid side simple. Therefore, we have to carry this little shoebox thing with us that's called an onboard charger. Um, there's something called a Type 2 plug, which, or J1772, uh, which has got a neutral protected earth and a lifeline, and additionally, two line for simple communication. And the street charger, you know, has got a payment gateway, two relays in it, 
Um, it's so simple that there's an open source version for it. One drawback is someone asked me, oh, could you make a uh, street charger that has the state of charge percentage of the vehicle um, shown on the lamppost? And the answer is no, because the lamppost doesn't even know how big the battery is that it's connected to or what the state of charge could possibly be. What you could do is you could have a display that shows how many kilowatt hours have gone through it from the meter because the lamppost knows that. Anyway, there's no information sharing between the car and the on-street charge about state of charge. All right, and this is all there is to it. This is AC charging in a nutshell. You should now know why this is limited to seven kilowatts most of the time, uh, what goes into the uh, street charger, uh, what an onboard charger is and what is in it, and um, have a very coarse idea of what the plug looks like. I hope this helped someone. Um, see you next video.